Some new versions of Arco Linux were released a couple of days ago, some new snapshots, so I thought now is a great time to take a look at one of the additions of Arco Linux I've been meaning to take a look at for a little while now, but haven't got around to it just yet. Today I'm going to take a look at Arco Linux, their BSP WM edition. Let's take a look. Alright, Arco Linux, their BSPWM edition. Arco Linux, as the name probably suggests, is an Arch-based Linux distribution. Um, the main dev is a guy named Eric Dubois who has a fantastic YouTube channel where he covers a lot of the development uh, for Arco Linux and he does a lot of tutorial videos on how to get things set up in Arco and in mainline Arch, which of course Arco is based on. Anyway, um, the 15th of July was the release date for the new Arco Linux and the Arco Linux D uh, version 6.9.1 was the version for those particular snapshots. If I go to download, uh, we have the, the options of downloading Arco Linux, Arco Linux D, Arco Linux B, uh, basically three different mm, branches or what, what they call phases. Uh, Arco Linux, just the standard Arco Linux, uh, is an easy install with three desktop environments pre-configured out of the box. You have XFCE, the open box window manager, and the i3 window manager all on the main edition of Arco. Arco Linux D and Arco Linux B are more for the tinkerers that want to uh, you know, install one particular desktop environment or window manager and to configure it pretty much themselves. Today what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at uh, Arco Linux B, their BSPWM edition. So I'm going to download that ISO and install this today inside a VM inside VirtualBox. Okay, so I downloaded the ISO for Arco Linux B, the BSPWM edition. Uh, that ISO was 1.9 gigs in size. So I'm booting it up inside VirtualBox and the boot menu. We have the option of boot Arco Linux, boot existing OS, Run MemTest, Hardware Info, Reboot, and Power Off. I'm going to choose the first option, Boot Arco Linux. I have absolutely no idea what Arco Linux B with the uh, BSPWM window manager, what the installation is going to entail. I don't know if it's a command line install, like a typical Arch install. I don't know if it's one of the Arco Linux D type installs where you have to go to GitHub and download some scripts and, you know, install it the way I did Arco Linux D earlier in the channel. I don't know if it's a graphical installer like the Calamari's installer. I'm really not sure. Kind of going into this blind, but I kind of like doing these that way. Uh, that way you get a a general, a genuine first reaction really from me. Uh, it is a graphical installer. So we have a live environment and this is the Calamari's installer. So we have the welcome screen here in the Calamari's installer. Uh, they use XFCE as the delivery system to install your desktop. What this means is the live environment is XFCE. This is the XFCE panel. Why is it XFCE when after I install it, I'm going to be using the BSPWM tiling window manager? It's because if you don't know how BSPWM operates, uh, it's going to be a bad day for you. So I understand why they're using U uh, XFCE as what they call the delivery system to install your desktop. They're probably going to do that on all the tiling window manager installs, you know, things like i3. I don't know if they're doing an Xmonad edition. I know they do awesome. Uh, I think down the road they may have plans to do Qtile. I, I need to talk with uh, Eric Dubois about that and, and see uh, what their plans are on that. I'm, I might can help them out if they need uh, some tips on how to configure Qtile. Uh, anyway, let me get through this installer here. English has been chosen for our language, American English. That's correct. Uh, time zone. We need to choose the central time zone in the U.S. So let me change the time zone. Click next. All right, keyboard. English U.S. is correct. So all I need to do is click next. All right, partition. I'm going to go ahead and let Arco do the automatic partitioning. If I wanted to do manual partitioning, I could choose manual partitioning and create the partitions myself. This would be useful if I wanted to create, you know, separate uh, home partitions or, you know, not create a swap, which often I do in VMs. But a lot of, a lot of times I just like to see what their automatic partitioning is going to do. So I'm going to choose that option. And it looks like it's going to create a 15 gig extended four file system. All right. By the way, this VM, I gave it 15 gigs of space. 
All right, we need to choose a username and a password. So username, I'm gonna call myself DT. Now I need to create a strong and complicated password for the user DT. All right, do we want to log in automatically without asking for a password? No, I'm gonna leave that ticked off. I want to be asked for a password. Do we want to use the same password for the administrator account or the root account? Absolutely, I'm gonna tick that on. That way, my home user, the DT user, and the pseudo user have the same password. I don't have to remember two different passwords. All right, summary, location is good. Keyboard is good. Partition scheme looks good. I'm gonna click install and it's gonna format the drive and write to the disk. Uh, typically when you get to this portion of the installer on most modern Linux distros, five to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video and I'll be back once the installation has completed. And the installer has finished. Anytime you uh, install a distro using the Calamaris installer, you always have to go down here and find restart now. You want to tick that box and then click done. Let me move my head out of the way here. Done. And it will reboot the machine. That is what I'm going to do right now. All right. I've rebooted Arco Linux B. Again, with the BSPWM window manager, the tiling window manager. By the way, I have never used BSPWM. I don't know anything about this particular window manager. So this could be interesting. Uh, doesn't look like the VirtualBox guest editions are installed. Let me take a second to install those and get those working. Okay, I got the VirtualBox guest editions up and running. Now, the guest editions were installed on Arco, but there was an update so I updated to the latest version of the VirtualBox Guest Editions, rebooted, and of course now we've got a proper screen resolution. Let me log in with my super secure password, and this is Arco Linux B, the BSPWM window manager, tiling window manager. I don't know anything about this tiling window manager, so the great thing about BSPWM, at least Arco Linux's version of it, it does have a conky on the desktop. Most tiling window managers using a tiling window manager, you really don't want stuff on your desktop because your desktop is always going to be filled with windows anyway. You're never going to see this. But for a brand new user to be at BSPWM, such as myself, I like having this, at least at first, so I actually know what the uh, key bindings are. For example, how do I open a menu? Well, the very first thing, uh, Super Shift and D. Super Shift D gets me a menu at the top. This is the D menu program. I recognize this particular program. I just start typing something, say, uh, is Firefox installed? It is. And you know, once I get to, to the point where Firefox is highlighted here, I just hit enter and Firefox should open. All right. And this will be a, a little bit different kind of review. I have no idea exactly what is installed by default on here. I uh, wonder if there is some kind of traditional menu uh, system other than uh, D menu. I'm not sure. Uh, Super Shift Q will close a program in a lot of tiling window managers. It does in Arco Linux as well. Super Shift Q to close a program. Uh, if I used Arco Linux long term BSPWM, I would probably change that key binding. I like Super Shift Q to quit, meaning to exit out of BSPWM, I usually do Super Shift C to close programs. This is a personal thing I'm used to. Uh, obviously, you know, you, you might be used to different key bindings yourself. These tiling window managers are meant to be configured, meant to be customized. You pretty much need to make them your own. Now we have other menus. So we had Super Shift D for the, for the D menu at the top. We escape out of that. We also have Alt F2 for this run command prompt where I could run something like, I don't know, termite. To launch the termite terminal, yep. Super Shift Q to close. They also have Alt F3 binded to a menu of some kind. Alt F3, okay. This looks like a, uh, is it one of the XFC, XFCE programs? I'm not exactly sure what this is, but this actually is a way to show us everything that is installed by default. I will very quickly just scroll down the list here. Uh, anything that looks uh, like it's worth mentioning, I'll mention it. File Manager, that's probably the XFCE File Manager, Thunar. We have a firewall, we have Firefox, 
Galculator is our calculator. We have Genie. I love Genie. I install Genie on every system. Genie is a nice uh, text editor. It's really an IDE, good for programming. Uh, they have GIMP, Gparted, uh, GRSync, GUVC View for a webcam. I use it. Uh, Inkscape. Actually, quite a bit of stuff installed. I, I expected that. The ISO, again, was 1.9 gigs in size. So, uh, of course, we have some cute stuff. Redshift is also here. Restretto is our image viewer. I have a couple of screenshot utilities. Simple scan, simple screen recorder. Transmission for a BitTorrent client. We have time shift for taking uh, snapshots of our system and doing uh, restores. Uh, I, uh, excuse me, USB image writer and USB stick formatter are both installed. Xterm, of course, for another terminal emulator, XFCE terminal is also here. The default terminal is the termite terminal, so we've got several terminal emulators installed on the system. Uh, VLC is also installed, Vivaldi, Vim, of course. I mean, you can't live without Vim. All right, so I don't know too much about BSPWM as far as its functionality. So I'm going to take a couple of minutes and play around with it. I'm going to pause the video just for a second. You know, I think probably the best way to attack this is to find whatever configuration file uh, there is for BSPWM, because that will tell me all the key bindings, all the functionality. So uh, looking at the conky, we can open up a file manager with super shift enter, super shift enter, opens Thunar. Okay. And let's show hidden files. And for most uh, configuration files on your system, they will be located in a hidden folder called the .config folder on your system. That's where most of your configuration files will be located. And yep, in that .config file, there is a folder called bspwm. Let's open up that particular directory. And I bet this one right here, bspwmrc. I'm gonna open that with genie since I like genie. And this should be our config. All right. Yep. So BSPC config border border widths for the windows, border gaps, top padding, uh, various layouts. I'm not going to really dive deep into BSPWM today because I don't know anything about it. Plus, I'm going to eventually review BSPWM, the window manager on the channel. Might be part of the next round of the obscure window manager project. So I, I'm not going to dive deep into BSPWM. I just wanted to know a little bit of the basics. Uh, of course, you can set up rules as far as apps that you always want to launch as floating apps rather than being tiled. There actually is not much to this config file. Wow, not much here. Uh, we also have an auto start file. Let's see if I can uh, open that. Open that in Genie. All the programs that launch on auto start. Uh, of course, XR and R, I guess, for uh, our multi monitors potentially. Uh, let's see, we've got FEH for setting our wallpaper, our background, uh, the network manager applet, Variety for our wallpaper changer, PAMAC uh, to let us know about system updates. We have our power manager, Trey, Conky, Compton for compositing. Uh, we wanted to, we could uncomment these lines and use nitrogen, I guess, for our wallpaper. I love nitrogen. I would probably do that. Caffeine, Dropbox, Blueberry Tray, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, you can edit this auto start file to your heart's content. And system overview here. Let's see what that is. I'm not exactly sure what that's going to be. System overview is uh, conky.config. Okay, this is the conky that sits on the desktop. Okay, so we can edit that conky, which is, you know, that a little system monitoring thing, the little widget that sits on our desktop. If I hit super and the letter two on the keyboard, I bet it switches me from the first workspace to the second workspace. All right, so you see at the top of the first workspace, I'm now on the second workspace. Anyway, this is Conky. And let me go back super one to go to the first workspace. Here is how you would edit that Conky. This tells you size, position, course colors and down here's some of the system monitoring stuff that that conky is showing us now one neat thing that I found uh, checking out some of Arco Linux BSPWM information on the web is let me close all of this so super shift Q to close 
the window with focus. Uh, watch what happens here. Uh, you see the wallpaper. Let me open a terminal. Super and enter opens a terminal. You see this particular terminal color scheme? Let me open up a couple of different terminals. And I'll launch a program on one of them. A super... Let's see, how do I shift focus of the windows? I'm not actually sure. Anyway. I can always move the mouse, though. Just shift focus. I'll open up, I don't know, something else. How about I just do a command? There you go. Anyway, you see the color scheme? Super shift in. Or, excuse me, was it? No, super control in, maybe? So just playing around with it for a couple of minutes. Um, you know, it works like most other tiling window managers as far as super enter gets us a terminal. Let me open up a second terminal. And I'll launch HTOP on one of them so we can see we have two different windows. Um, super shift and one, well, actually we're already on workspace one, super shift two for workspace two will send the window with focus, HTOP, or to workspace two. We went to workspace two with that program. See, we're on workspace two. Here's HTOP. I can super shift one to send HTOP back to workspace one. We also move back to work, workspace one with HTOP. Uh, some other neat things, just playing around with it for a bit. A super control and the numbers on the key keyboard, uh, not the keypad, but the top uh, one through zero. If I do four, watch what happens. It splits this area of the screen. Uh, if I hit super enter to open a terminal now, you know, it fits that right in there. Not exactly sure exactly how, how this works. Again, I haven't looked that much into BSPWM. I'm just coming at this from a brand new user. I'm going to do a much more in-depth review of BSPWM somewhere down the road. It'll probably be a few weeks down the road. But anyway, just a very quick overview of Arco Linux BSPWM. I also noticed the terminal color scheme and the wallpaper. Uh, Alt, Shift, and N on the keyboard. Alt, Shift, N. You notice the wallpaper just changed and the terminal color scheme just changed. Alt shift N again. Guessing N stands for next, maybe. Alt shift P for previous. I think we'll go back to the one right before it with the lion. Yep. Very cool. So I'm going to alt shift N a few times just to uh, show you some of the color schemes. This is actually really, really neat. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how they're accomplishing that, what kind of magic Eric Dubois is uh, is doing here, but this is pretty neat. Uh, I would love to be able to do that in every tiling window manager I run, actually. This is it's just a really neat feature. It is kind of slow how it changes. I mean, it takes a minute for you know everything on your terminals to change and the wallpaper to change, but that is pretty cool. Anyway, let me super shift Q to close all those open windows. What are my initial thoughts of Arco Linux B, their BSPWM edition? Well, having played with it hmm, a few minutes, <laughs> uh, I like it. I, I, I'm, I'm absolutely going to install this on physical hardware. I'm going to put Arco Linux B, the BSPWM edition, on one of my laptops behind me. Uh, so I'm going to install it on physical hardware, probably right after I make this video, and I'm going to play around with BSP, WM, and Arco, you know, on a physical machine, you know, for a few weeks, maybe a month or two. Anyway, overall, Arco Linux, it always gets an A-plus from me. Before I go, I do need to give a special thanks to all my patrons, all my Patreon supporters. Ansem, David, Carlos, Chuck, Daniel, Brian, Leor, AK, Ron, Mr. Neely Pops, Bart, Robert, Marcus, Dan, Mr. Smarty Pants, Swami, Ben, Humade, Keith, Dan, Mr. GFY, Michael, Tony, Bruno, David, Silvio, Omar, John, Carl, Greg, Christian, Rob, Matt, Mark, Tiedemann, First Stephen, Second Stephen, Third Stephen, Eduardo, Alex, Jake, Benjamin, Marcus, Interceptor, First Paul, Second Paul, John, and Tubella. You guys rock. You guys help make this show possible. Peace, guys.